guys, what is up? So today's video, I'm going to be telling you five tips that can help you do well in calculus. Just a quick little background on my experience with calculus. I did, I don't usually like talk about grades because I feel like people might just sort of take it the wrong way sometimes. But I did get a 4.0 in the class, it would have been a 4.3 if my school offered that, but they don't, we only have 4.0s. So I did get a 4.0 in the class, I know what I'm talking about, my tips are going to be useful hopefully. Um, but also I just want to say that I learn a little bit differently than other people. I don't necessarily need to be spending hours and hours and hours of time a day studying for something, so I really, the time that I do spend studying for something, I really dedicate that time to studying. And yeah, that's just how I do it. I don't have time really to be studying hours and hours a day for one class. Um, so yeah, here are my tips. Let's get started. So tip number one, uh, and this is going to be a no duh. I say this in every single tip video about any type of class. You need to go to class and I'm not even gonna lie, I missed one or two classes and when I missed those classes, I was like, what the heck? Uh, what is going on? I, I'm lost. Because the thing about calculus is literally from day one, you are building on top of everything. I think one of the first things we did was limits and differentiation and you just keep building and building upon the same principle. So if you don't know, if you miss one of the classes in the beginning, you're going to be pretty much SOL for the rest of the semester. And also while you're in class, obviously pay attention, take notes. So getting down to more specifics that are more calculus based, you are going to need to memorize some some aspects of it. Uh, generally math, you only need to memorize formulas and whatnot. And yes, you're going to need to memorize the formulas for like when you're differentiating what to do with the exponents and what to do if there's like a coefficient, you're going to need to memorize that and that is key. And you're also going to need to memorize things like the product rule, chain rule, and really get those deep down into your head. Because if you don't know that, you're going to be, once again, SOL. And when you get into other things more down the line, like integration and things like that, you're really going to be screwed. So yeah, things like that you're going to need to memorize as well as the trig functions um, and what how to differentiate those. There's going to be about six basic ones that you're going to need to know. And if you don't know them and you're given a problem during the test and you just don't know what the, how to differentiate that or how to integrate that back, you're going to be, you're gonna get the answer wrong. Like there's just no way around it. So yeah, that's the second tip. And for the third tip, that's how today's going. So for the third tip, what I did before the test is I would find practice tests um, online and I would find practice problems online and I would just do them. And this I would start doing two days before the test and I would honestly spend like one or two hours each day and then maybe an hour before the test doing practice problems. At my school, the calculus professor, we don't have a study guide, instead they give us a pra an additional practice exam that we can look at and it's gonna be like 70 problems and I would do all 70 of those problems problems because no matter what um, there's an infinite amount of problems you can get in calculus but if you get the basics down and you know what to do you know the formula of how to do it um, you're going to be okay so yes practice is key you just need to practice so that you can get the fundamentals down super super quick so that when you're given a problem that might have you know like the product rule the chain rule all that in one problem you'll be able to break it down piece by piece it's actually what I did I would sort of, I would break it down piece by piece because when I see something and I'm just like analyzing the problem and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's three different formulas I'm going to need to use, I would have to calm myself down and be like, all right, we're gonna take this one step at a time. So just calm down when you're doing it and practice. So my next tip is, I don't even know what number I'm on, I'm so sorry. Uh, so my next tip is going to be to not rely on your calculator. Um, Honestly, you can get through all of calculus except for maybe like the difference of sums sometimes, 
but even then it tells you not to use your calculator. So anyways, you can get through all of calculus pretty much without using your calculator. Do not rely on your calculator because in the end, I think it's going to do way more harm for you. Uh, a lot of calculus is by hand. However, I will say that I did use my calculator a couple times during an exam when I just wanted to check to make sure I was right or I was going down the right path. Um, I would type in, for example, limits uh, when I had to find a limit of something. I would type in the equation and then I would see where the graph went and where the limit would possibly be. Uh, so that's sort of what I use, sort of like a double check for me. Also, just a side note, if you are coming from pre-cal, obviously you have to take pre-cal before calculus. Um, if you don't know what your sine, cosine values um, for angles and radians, you're going to be a little bit behind because there is a lot of that needed and also um, your basic trig properties like uh, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one like those basic things if you see them on a test and you don't know that that's supposed to be one you're really going to be in trouble so another tip that i have is i got a whiteboard um i don't know if you've watched my nursing videos on how to study but i do have a whiteboard that i got from amazon and it's like a stand-up whiteboard and i use expo markers and i practice problems on there because for me it's a lot more entertaining for me or like more aesthetically pleasing to practice it on the whiteboard. I don't know why, but it really helped. And um, with that being said, I actually even found that some of the problems that I found online on practice tests were actually ones that were on my test. So like I already had a background of what the answer should be around. Okay, and then also I wanted to talk about word problems in calculus because word problems are really something that would just get me. Um, I found them to be sort of hard at first, but then once I really got it down, I was able to understand it a lot more. So for example, uh, if you're not too far into calculus, you're probably not gonna understand this, but you know, when you get to the word problem, it's going to be asking you for acceleration, velocity of some, of some like box or something, like as it's growing bigger. And the thing is you have to realize that each word problem is generally going to be using the same the same method to get the answer. You're just going to be differentiating an equation. And I didn't really get that for a while. So I'm gonna quickly draw something out. And if you if you get what I'm drawing or writing, then that's great. And if you don't, I'm sorry, a waste of your time. I'm sorry, you'll never give it back. Sorry. Um, maybe write this down. It will be useful at some point when you get to the word problems because I did not have this written down until about the second test. And after that, it really, really helped me. So. In calculus, you'll be getting word problems that are like, the cube is growing at blah, blah, blah seconds. Like, what is what is the, the width going to be at this velocity when it's growing at this rate? Or, you know, whatever. It doesn't even matter. Just write this down. So, the three things that'll be tested whenever you are doing word problems, most likely in calculus, are going to be position, velocity, and acceleration. So... I wrote down this little thing for me and I write it down on every single test after we introduce the word problems. And basically, if you wanted to go from position to velocity or velocity to acceleration, you would differentiate this way and then you would integrate this way to get that, if that makes sense. So if you were given a position, a position and you needed the acceleration for the word problem answer, you would just take the second order derivative, duh. And I had to write this out to really understand that that's what that's like all you had to do. All you had to do is differentiate the problem twice, but I hope that helped. I hope that made sense. Lastly, I would recommend watching YouTube videos. Specifically, there is a guy that I would watch, Professor Dave Explains is the channel. I would listen to him like on the way to school. I would watch him if I was having problems um, with anything really in calculus and specifically I was having problems in implicit differentiation and the reason I was having problems in implicit differentiation is because I didn't go to class that day so I really needed someone to show me and he did a great job of explaining it so yeah I would really recommend watching his video so yeah thank you so so much for watching and if you're taking calculus or you're planning on taking calculus you can do this you got it you're gonna do great in the class and yeah I hope you had guys I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are, and until next time, bye!